Okay, let's get to work solving this polynomial inequality. So to do so, it's already factored for us, which is very nice. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and figure out when is each one of these factors going to equal zero. Now the first factor here, the negative three, is never going to equal zero because it doesn't have an x with it. But as we look forward, we have x minus one. We can either set this equal to zero and solve that equality down, or we can just kind of visualize if we plugged in a one into this factor, one minus one makes a zero. For the next one, x plus seven, we're gonna use x equals negative seven, for negative seven plus seven makes zero. And finally, we get x equals positive six. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and place these numbers, these values on the number line in numerical order. So in our case, negative seven is gonna come first, followed by a one, and then Finally, we get six going on over here. Um, didn't space them out, make them look pretty, just split up the number line into four distinct sections. From here, what we need to do is pick out one test value in each one of these sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose, I don't know, negative 10 fits out here to the left of negative seven. That'll be our first test value that I'll go ahead and place in the table here. Next, you'll notice in our table, I've listed out each one of our factors. We have our negative three, the x minus one, x plus seven, and you'll notice that I used x minus six twice, and the reason for that is because of this exponent. That exponent means that we have two copies of that factor multiplied together. So I went ahead and listed it out. There are other ways to accomplish the same goal, but I think for simplicity's sake, let's go ahead and treat it this way. Next, what we're gonna do is go ahead and plug in our test value, that negative test, 10 to each one of these factors and all we care about is does the outcome turn out being positive or negative now the negative 3 is going to consistently be negative the whole way through all right you could fill in the entire table straight on down below the negative 3 it's always going to be negative but what happens if we plug in negative 10 into each of these other factors we have negative 10 minus 1 makes negative 11, we don't really care about the number that comes out so much, just positive or negative. Next, negative 10 plus seven makes negative three. Well, that's another negative. Negative 10 minus six, negative 16, but another negative and the same thing because it's a repeat factor. Now let's count up how many total negatives did we get when we tested negative 10. Well, one, two, three, four, five. So five total negatives. All right. What that means is if we have five negatives multiplied together, that's an odd number of negatives. And the overall result is going to work out to be negative. So I'm going to go ahead and say in this portion of my number line, it's overall going to be negative. Now we just repeat the same process a few more times. Next, we pick another test value between negative seven and one. Let's go ahead and pick zero. That's a nice test value. All right, negative three, again, always gonna be negative. From here, we test in, we've got zero minus one, makes a negative. Zero plus seven, positive. Zero minus six, negative. Zero minus six, again, gonna be negative. Again, counting them up, we have one negative, two, three, four, Four total negatives, well that's an even number of negatives. An even number of negatives multiply together to give us a positive. So in this portion, it's gonna be overall positive. All right, let's move on between one and six. Got a lot of nice integer values, let's try three. All right, so testing three, the negative three automatically gets a negative. Next we have negative three minus one or sorry, positive three minus one makes positive two. So positive in that section. We have positive three plus seven, that's positive 10. Positive is what we care about. Positive three minus six is gonna be negative three. And the same thing goes here. All right, next, counting them up, we have one negative, two, three total going across there. All right, so three, an odd number, again, gets us to a negative overall result. And then one more test value. Let's pick anything to the right of six. Let's go 10. Um, any value you pick in these portions of the number line should give you the overall same exact positive or negative result. 
So negative 3 is a factor, automatically negative. Then let's test. We have negative 3, sorry, positive 10 minus 1 makes positive 9. So positive, positive 10 plus 7, positive 17, positive 10 minus 6, positive 4, and the same thing in that last one because it's the same exact factor. Now counting up our total number of negatives, we have one in this section. Well, one negative multiplied by a bunch of positives is overall going to be a negative result. All right, now's the point where we haven't even cared about whether we were looking for positive portions or negative portions of our number line um, at all. So now let's take a look at our sign. The sign turns out to be a less than zero. So if we're trying to look at values that are going to overall be less than zero, we should be looking for our negative values on the number line. So that means out here to the left-hand side, we said it was going to be negative, and that continues on forever. We didn't have to stop at negative 10. We could have picked more and more negative values at that direction. It goes between 1 and 6, this portion of the number line where we tested our 3, and it also goes to the right, off forever in that direction, so I'll include an arrow. The last thing we should double check is, is it all right to use these values, the negative 7, 1, and 6? All right, because it was a strict inequality and it did not have an or equal to, if you plugged in negative 7, the left-hand side would actually equal 0 and not make a true statement, meaning it would not be less than 0, it would equal 0. So in our case, we're going to get open circles at each one of these values. All right, the last thing we need to do is convert this number line over into interval notation. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it one chunk at a time. We'd start out, we'd say, from negative infinity. That's that arrow going way off to the left-hand side. And I'll go ahead and not include negative infinity because we never quite get there. Comma. This portion ends at negative 7. It's also not going to be included because of the open circle. All right, that positive section is not going to be part of our solution set. So there will be a union in between our next section. The next section, it looks like, begins at 1 and ends at 6, neither side included. All right, another union, and we have to the right of 6. We go from 6 forever to the right, which is to positive infinity. Neither one of those is going to be included. So as you'll note, when we get done here, we have three separate interval notations with union signs in between. Sorry, it got a little bit cluttered, but trying to fit this all into one screen so we could see everything at the same time was a little bit tricky. So I hope this helps out as you're working on um, polynomial inequalities. Um, just follow these steps and you should go right where you need to be. Good luck as you're working on these.